in Mark chapter 10 and verse 13. It says, And they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And it says, And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. Verse 14, But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased. In the, uh, in the New King James, it says he was greatly displeased. Everybody say greatly displeased. I remember um, I was reading this at one point, and uh, I realized that there's a segment of North American Christianity where we do not allow ourselves to express great displeasure. Somehow we think that expressing great displeasure is not Christian. And yet it says here that Jesus was greatly displeased because they were preventing the children from coming to him. I won't go into a whole lot of it, but I think we're all aware that there are those in our culture nowadays who are very actively preventing the little children from coming to Jesus by the messages that they are sending them. They are absolutely confusing them, brainwashing them. And there is a place, no, there's actually a need for the church who has Christ inside of us to be greatly displeased. And it says that Jesus, when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. So out of his great displeasure over what really the spirit of religion was doing through the enemy against the children, he was motivated to, number one, speak out against that, but then to positive action, which was to say, no, let the little children come to me. And as they came to him, he laid his hands on them and he blessed them. And then he taught his disciples saying, unless you become like a little child, unless you receive the kingdom of God like a little child, you will by no means, you will by no means, you will not in any way, shape, or form inherit the kingdom of God, nor should you think that you will if you do not Receive the kingdom of God like a little child if you do not come to him like a little child. The stuff that we were doing here today, the, um, the stories, the, the videos, the music, and the balloons, I believe that that's going to be more representative of heaven than many of us would think and probably than most of us would be comfortable with. I think when we get to heaven, there's going to be an awful lot of play going on. I don't think it's going to be all, um, well, oh, we're just, I think there's going to be a lot of laughter, a great deal of laughter and exuberance and joy. And we see that in little children, that they're very quick to laugh, very quick to play with kids that they don't even know a different color. They don't care. It's just, hey, do you want to have fun? Do you want to play together? And I believe that even that prophetic word that I spoke that I know was for some people in the house here last week, that, that there are people who have, been, have become weary through life, have become weary through the battle, even through ministry or contending or, or, or pressing in, and it's like you've become old on the inside. Eli Miller, one of, you know, he was here a few weeks back there, and he said, how old would you be if you didn't know how old you were? If you didn't know how old you were, how old would you be? He says, you're only as old as you feel. Right? And so what I believe God is offering in this season, and I know he's offering it for me. And there's some effort involved. There's some effort involved in going up the hill of faith to receive what God is intending to give to us. In fact, it's almost easier to stay in the inertia, in the, in the sort of status quo of, well, I'm older now, I've done things, and, every, you know, and I've done a bunch of stuff, and so now I'm planning on coasting through into the end. You know, Scripture says, it says, um, if anyone shrinks back, I will find no, my soul will have no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back to perdition, but of those who press on to the saving of the soul. 
And Eli teaches that that word shrinks back. Actually, what it means is in the context of, of the Olympic Games, it means to slacken the pace at the end of the race. You know, you see people running, and there's the finish line, and then they're just kind of, and then they just kind of walk across the line. And what God is saying is, no, press toward the mark. Lean in with everything that you have to cross that finish line with as much passion and fervency and faith and zeal as you did when you began. And if you shrink back, you're shrinking back to perdition. Listen, emotion, and I'll be talking about this in days to come, emotion is very important to God. That's why we have them. That's why we have emotions. And little children... Do not, unless they're abused, unless they're oppressed or repressed, they don't suppress their emotions. They wear their heart on their sleeve. David, King David in the Bible, was one of the most emotional people that we see in the Bible. He says, I flood my bed with tears. You know, shout to the Lord. And I mean, he's, he's a really emotional guy, and he's called a man after God's own heart. And God is calling us to step out in faith to have our strength renewed. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Now the scripture talks about their youth being renewed like the eagles. So the real question is, do I want my youth renewed like the eagles? Because that was a lot of work, right, being young? <laughs> and God says, I want to renew your youth. But in order for that to happen, you're going to have to let go of the past. You're going to have to let go of your victories because it doesn't matter if you got past victories, if you got present lukewarmness and complacency. And it doesn't matter about your past failures. Don't wear them like a badge of honor. Don't wear your past mistakes or the mistakes or the sins of others against you. You don't need them. And they slow you down. They really slow you down. Let them go and say, God, put back in me the heart of a child that I can receive the kingdom like a little child. What we're doing here with balloons and all that stuff, you say, well, that's not very spiritual. Oh, it's so spiritual. And the very fact that any of us would have a hard time doing it is an indication of how bound up we have become. How much the spirit of religion can bind us up because little children aren't bound up that way. You put some balloons in the air and put some music on, they're going to have a good time. How much do you need in order to have a good time? You need a you know, hammock on a beach in Maui and a Mai Tai? Is that what you need? Can you have a good time with some music and some pastel colors in some stretchy rubber? That's all the children need. You buy them a toy, you buy them a present, they're happy with the cardboard box. We become so high maintenance the older we get. We have to have everything just so. And that is completely contrary. Paul said, I've learned in all things to be content. And God wants to renew our youth like the eagles. He wants us to become little children again. I was with my, my, my daughter and her friend, and we went out with, um, with uh, um, Suzanne and Luke. We went out to Greenpoint Bay there in, in, Cultus, or, uh, in, in Harrison, and we were swimming. We were having a good time. Suzanne, you didn't tell us about the itch. Now we've got some serious <laughs> itch going on from whatever was in the water. <laughs> She's downstairs. I'll get her later. But I was driving back. And it was, you know, late at night after we'd had a gorgeous day. It was Monday when it was like 35 degrees. And, and I'm driving back, and it's, I'm sitting in this car. I mean, it's a 19, or 2000, 2001 Honda Accord. It's not like some, you know, amazing, crazy new car or something. But it works, and the AC works. <sighs> Do you know that most of history, most of humanity has not had AC? That should cause you to celebrate and shout right now. If you have AC in your car, you should be thankful. I don't care what else is going on wrong in your life. You've got AC. You can get in that car, and I don't care how hot it is outside. You can be blowing cool air at yourself. And I'm driving in the car, or I'm on the freeway, and you get to do 110 between Chilliwack and Abbotsford, and the car, and I got cruise control. And I'm like, and then we put, I got music. Like amazing artists and recordings, Christian people worshiping God. And I, I'm in sitting in surround sound. And I got power steering, so I can just like super easy, I can steer this car. Don't even have to touch the gas. Surrounded by music with cold air blowing on me. And I'm traveling 110 kilometers an hour, and I'm watching those white lines go by. Zoop, 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 zoop. And they're like 10 feet long. And I'm thinking, the 
people of yesteryear, if you could suddenly transport one of them into the car with you, they'd be like, oh, 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 what is this? Oh, we're going so fast. Oh, they'd be so amazed. They, they, they wouldn't get over it for, I don't know, weeks, months, years or something. It would just blow them away completely that such a thing was possible, and we take it for granted. But see, if I have the heart of a little child, then I stay in a place of wonder. And I, and, and I look at all the things that he gives me, and I go, oh, that's amazing. That's, as Mr. Carey would say, it's very exciting. <laughs> Are you very excited? If you're not, God wants to excite you with his goodness, with his glory, and with his good plans for you. But the only people who are going to receive the things that he's ready to pour out are the people who ask him to, res to restore and renew their youth like the eagles, who step up in faith again and say, God, let me come to you like a little child, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the beauty of worshiping you and, and fellowshipping with you. We thank you that you gave us emotions to express, Lord, we, we saw a few weeks ago the World Cup, we saw people going absolutely barmy, absolutely ballic, uh, ballistic, throwing their beer in the air and dancing like mad people because somebody kicked an inflated piece of synthetic whatever between two pieces of plumbing, Lord God. And they get so excited about that, and we are in a relationship with the Lord of glory who has made a way through the shed blood of his Son for us to become his children, and Jesus, our brother. Thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and your goodness. Lord, in this season, I ask that you would stir up, Lord, creativity again, that you would stir up that childlike innocence, that, that optimism, which is so characteristic of a child, that something amazing, something good is going to happen any moment, and we're easily delighted by you and by your gifts. We thank you this morning that you said that this kind of worship is perfected praise, and through it you still the avenger in the gate and silence the mouth of the enemy. We ask for your blessing upon your people and that you would get all of us back into that place of childlike faith and expectation for the good things that you are doing now and in the days to come. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said, amen. Okay, I lied. It was a 10-minute uh, message. I don't usually do this, but the Lord wants you to set your imagination free so that through his Holy Spirit, he would let you soar to new heights, new heights in him, so that you would use your imagination to imagine his love for you. Can you imagine the love that God has for each one of us? His love is so powerful. And he wants you to use your imagination, just like a little child, just like those little children. They, they let their imagination go. Because with that imagination comes faith. The faith that he wants you to have in him. So please let your imagination, set your imagination free this morning. So that you can soar to new heights with him. Because his word says you can be seated in heavenly places with him. Thank you, Steve. Amen. Good exhortation. You're blessed and you're released. Go and enjoy our Father's beautiful and wonderful playground.